Hey everyone, today you're going to learn how to create and manage your view projects with this really cool space-like graphical user interface. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my view tutorial, but if you're new to view, you could watch this full view course at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. So today we're gonna take a look at what's called the View UI or user interface. And this is a command that you can issue to the View CLI or command line interface after you install it. And it will launch a browser with this user interface here. And it's really handy, but in a nutshell, what it allows you to do is to both create projects and also manage those existing projects through this user interface. It allows you to add and remove and configure plugins and dependencies. And it also allows you to run tasks right from this user interface and it provides you with detailed stats that you wouldn't otherwise have access to if you were just uh, using the console or your command line to run these tasks. So it's really powerful and really cool looking as well. Um, so for today's question, how much experience do you have with Vue? I decided to make the question relevant based on this topic today. So just let me know in the, um, the, the comments. I'll let you know my thoughts. And also, maybe if you don't have experience, maybe you want to have experience and maybe you want to see more Vue tutorials. All right, let's get started. All right, so to get started, we're gonna hop in our command line or console and you have to make sure that, you know, of course, I'm gonna assume you already have Node.js installed in um, the Node Package Manager. It will use it to install if you don't already have the latest uh, view CLI with this command right here. So hit enter and let that install. I already installed it just yesterday, so I don't need to. Um, and then once it's installed, we're gonna need to issue the command view UI. All right, here we go. I got my Facebook page open. <clears throat> All right, so this is the UI um, that I'm talking about. And um, yours by default uh, might be, it's gonna show the light version, but if you come down here, wow, you probably can't even see this because I'm, I'm on top of it. <laughs> well, there's a little icon that says toggle dark mode. I think it's a little bit easier to see in this mode, so um, I'm gonna switch to that. And oh, we can see the, the first page that you probably landed on, if you ran this for this first time, was this one, which is the View Project Manager. Um, I already created a project, and so it just selected it by default. That's why it showed up differently. Um, but what we're going to do is we're gonna create a new project, all right? so. You no longer have to run the view create command. This is going to simulate that in a you know a graphical user interface context. All right, so um, we're going to create a new project here, and this is where we specify the project folder. So um, notice right here it says um, my view. No, I want to change that just to code. Select this folder, and then one thing that. I mean, this is kind of embarrassing, but I was, you know, I thought everything was here. I was just going to leave it at my app and um, I was just going to hit next. I could not figure out why the hell I couldn't click next. I was here for like five minutes and then finally I realized this was just placeholder text. It was empty. So they need to fix that because this looks like that's filled in with some type of value. You have to click on it to see that it's actually placeholder text. So give it a name or whatever. Um, I'm just going to call it Viewy. And I, uh, yeah, this is all looking good. Um, package manager, of course, uh, you could set this to NPM, Yarn, or whatever is default on your system. Just gonna hit next here. All right, so now we could select uh, presets. So this is the same uh, thing that you would see if you typed in view create and whatever your project name is in the uh, command line, um, except it's just here in this visual context. So we'll select manually select features and hit next. All right, and so we can see that by default it has Babel. Um, we can add TypeScript, we can add PWA support. Let's do that to make it a pro progressive web app. And as you can see, I mean, from a user experience standpoint, um, using this as opposed to just the console or command line, um, it, it's a lot nicer, I think, especially we have the more info button. So if you wanna learn more about PWAs, well, let's click on that and 
there we wait that doesn't make sense there we go wait no oh the view I, I thought it was just taking me straight to the view cli it's actually the the uh, cli plugin so, so now it's going to tell you um everything you want to know about this particular um plugin right here or feature all right so i think this is good we'll be good with this for now so um let's go ahead and hit next and it's going to give us a configuration section here so pick a linter or format conf config uh you could select this stuff right here and i'll just choose es lint with error prevention only lint on save create project and we can optionally choose to save this everything that we just configured as a preset so that for future projects we can just select that instead of going through all of that um, i'm just going to continue without saving and so now we have a nice interface here where it's letting us know that it's installing the Vue CLI plugins. This might take a while. Normally, this is where all the stuff is spit out in the, in the output of the console. All right, and it installed. Awesome stuff. So the very first page that we're selected, we see currently we have our project of Vue selected. It'll also list out your recent projects here, your other projects that you're using. Um, we can also uh, open in the editor, so whatever default editor you have, it'll open it up. Um, we get back to the other page by going to View Project Manager. Um, up here, we can see we can add View X or the Add to View Router simply because we don't we didn't add it, but it'll give us this option quickly in the form of a of a button to add those very easily. And um, up here we have add plugin. We'll click that in a second, but we can see under installed plugins, this is gonna show us all of the currently installed plugins that we have. So for instance, because we chose to manually include the PWA plugin, it's right here, gives you that more info button. So let's go ahead and say, okay, we wanna add a plugin. Let's click this. So this is gonna load uh, a ton of different view related plugins right here, and you can search through them which is really cool. Um, for instance, uh, let's say you want to have like a GraphQL database for your app. So all you do is just select this. And I, I love the, uh, the little micro interactions that we have here in the animations. Uh, th they've obviously spent a lot of time. So we could choose to install this Vue CLI plugin Apollo package. All right, so then we have a configuration section. So everything's completely graphical here and, and, and a nice user interface. Um, add example code. All right, so let's say you don't have much experience with GraphQL. Uh, this will generate a component, a GraphQL files, and an example schema. That's pretty awesome. Want to add the GraphQL API server? Sweet. Let's add mocking and let's hit finish installation. All right, so then we click continue, and there we go. We have our new Apollo plugin. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now, go to dependencies here, and I uh, basically it's just going to show all the project dependencies based on like the main dependencies and development dependencies, and these are basically found in the package JSON file. So it's just basically providing you with more information um, for each one of these. Uh, you can also delete them over here and it's gonna give you all the version information. So it's just a lot easier to look at um, as opposed to like it's just a, a JSON uh, file. Over here, I, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, you can also install dependency from this section as well, which we're not gonna do. Um, configuration, all right, so I, if we click on View CLI, this is basically the basic config options for your view project. All right, so where's the base URL? The output directory default is dist, as we can see here. Um, the assets directory, all of this good stuff. Um, nice toggle uh, buttons that you can turn on and off options. And then if you make changes, just hit refresh or cancel. All right, we also have uh, our PWA. So because we added this and Apollo, we have configuration uh, settings for uh, the PWA and such. So for instance, plugin mode. Um, again, if you're not familiar with PWAs, I click on more info, it's going to take you back to that same page about, you know, what these options mean right here, like the theme color, the splash background color, uh, generate SW versus inject manifest. What the hell is that? Click more info. It's right there for you. It's really awesome. It's going to take you to um, Workbox, which I covered recently. And by the way, I will be doing a view 
plus PWA tutorial shortly. Um, we're not going to get into here though. Um, and then our, also our Apollo server, just some basic settings that are associated with this. And let's go ahead to tasks. Now tasks is really cool because it allows you to run actual tasks from this user interface um, that you would regularly use and issue via the command line. So, you know, serving your project, your, your view project. Now this is really cool looking. Um, let's run um, the serve command. So this is gonna let you know what command it's actually gonna run, but it provides you with so much more information. Like check out this little area right here. It's got building the modules, kind of letting you know how far along it's on. It, uh, the status is success, zero errors, zero warnings. It's gonna let you know how large the assets, modules, and dependencies are. Um, it's also going to let you know speed stats, so you don't get that uh, with just the, uh, the the normal console. Uh, so the speed stats are based on you know this current app being served uh, with devices slash uh, uh, networks right here. So these are basic load times here. Um, also has a, a breakdown of all the assets and their, uh, their, their size along with uh, uh, their speed on different connections. Um, and obviously this is these are pretty large and these are large because we're running the serve command as, as opposed to the build command. So we run serve when we're just developing. But it's gonna give you all this information which is really cool. Um, it also has an output. So this is just showing you what you would see in your, your, your console. Um, it has an analyzer Look at this, very impressive stuff. Just kind of a, a chart-based approach to viewing file size uh, based across your different dependencies and such. All right, so by the way, when we run the serve um, command, obviously where you know if we wanna look at it, just click open app, and there we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. And uh, this, of course, we're getting errors because uh, we, did, we chose not to run the, uh, um, the GraphQL server. We, we, not, we didn't choose not to run, but we haven't ran it, which is if we go right here, um, you can run the GraphQL server right here. Awesome stuff right there. And then you can even uh, you could hit the play button to get a response here. This is kind of like the playground thing. I'll be covering GraphQL in the future. All right, uh, but yeah, basically this is uh, very impressive. So if we go to our uh, application tab, we have our service worker and also our manifest, which this is where all this stuff is coming from um, the configuration section of our PWA right here. Um, we can now see that it's a, an actual PWA, Progressive Web App. All right, so let's uh, run one more command or task. So let's stop this task. And let's go to build. And then we'll choose run task. All right, so we'll see this over here. This is our our a visual indicator of where things are. And you'll see the assets and modules of dependence, everything's gonna be a lot, lot smaller um, as opposed to the other one. So this time it says we have three warnings, which we can check the, uh, the output here for that. And it's gonna tell you, you know, everything normally that you would um, encounter. So yeah, that is basically it. All right, so hopefully you found that helpful. For today's question, make sure you answer it. How much experience do you have with Vue? And maybe if you don't have any, uh, are you interested in learning more about Vue? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you soon.